This is a story about you. We can't actually use your name in our story, since all names and faces must remain fictional. So let's give you a stage name. How about uh, Parker? Joe Parker. This is your house, the one without a TV antenna. Joe Parker Sr. is home right now. Let's go in and see him. But wait, there's Mama Parker. <laughs> Sounds like she's badgering Joe for a television set. Seems like everybody else on the street has one except the Parker family. And my goodness, since Joe is by trade a TV cabinet maker, who can blame Mama for complaining? Well, here's Joe. You'll pardon him for not looking up. He's really got a problem. He's trying to push those figures around so his budget can afford a TV set. The budget would be a pushover, except here's the trouble. It's Bill Greenstuff. You know him. Everybody does. He's welcome in everyone's pocketbook and piggy bank. Trouble is, he's usually too little, too late, or doesn't stay long enough. He's a hard fellow to keep around. Well, Joe comes through after all. He mastered that budget. It was simple. All it took was leaving out food and clothing. So here we are at the Seymour and Better Television Company, Incorporated, to buy a TV set for the Parker family. Bill Greenstuff came along too. You can't see him. He's hiding in Joe's pocket. He has a sneaking suspicion he's gonna be traded off for that TV set. And you know something? He's right. Well, a man and his money are soon parted. There go Mama and Joe with that crazy TV set, leaving poor Bill in the hands of Mr. Ree Taylor. Bill is tired after that strenuous business transaction, and he'd like to take it easy for a while. But Mr. Ree Taylor has other plans. His stock of TV sets is low, so he's sending Bill along with an order for some new sets over to the wholesaler. Business is looking up for Mr. Wholesaler. Bill drops in with that order from Mr. Ree Taylor, and those dust-catching TV sets begin to move right into the truck and across town to Mr. Ree Taylor. Naturally, those departing sets have left a vacant spot, so our wholesaler calls up Mr. Manufacturer to see how chances are for getting a new shipment. Delighted, he says, as Bill, needing no further cue, wearily picks up the order and moves on to Mr. Manufacturer, who receives him quite graciously, although Bill is beginning to get a bit frayed around the edges from all his travels. Sensing this fatigue, Mr. Manufacturer puts Bill away for a short rest. Too darn short for Bill's thinking. He had just gotten settled nicely when the roll call was sounded for payday and Bill's name was called. Hey, Bill! And to whom do you suppose Bill is doled out? You guessed it, Joe Parker. Joe makes TV cabinets in Mr. Manufacturer's plant. Catch that eager look on Joe's face. You'd think he'd found a long lost friend. Later on the way home from work, Bill gives Joe a blow by blow description of his travels. There I was, flat on my back, when you left me with that real gone retailer. And ever since then, I've been chasing television sets around. First, you traded me to the retailer for television. Then the retailer traded me to a wholesaler for television. And the wholesaler traded me to the manufacturer for television, who traded me to you for your services in his television factory. Boy, after a trip on that television merry-go-round, I'm dead. I can't wait to pile into an old wallet for a nice long snooze. Hey, what happened? Thought I was talking to Joe Parker. Uh-oh. See that fiendish look in Mama Parker's eye? Here we go again. Next day, there goes Mama with Bill in her handbag down to Madame Fifi's hat shop for that little number in the window that she's been eyeing so long. It wasn't hard to clinch the deal. All it took was... Oh, la, la. Madame looks so chic in the hat. And Bill has changed hands again. Uh-oh. Looks like he's not going to get that nap at all. He forgot that there's more than one turn on a merry-go-round. 
From Mrs. Joe Parker, the consumer in this case, Bill is paid to a retailer, Madame Fifi. From there, he will go to one of Madame's wholesale creditors. From the wholesaler, Bill will be passed to the factory where the goods are manufactured. And eventually, when the factory pays its workers, our greenback friend is again in the hands of consumers, and we have completed another money cycle. Bill and others like him are always on the jump, making up a continuing flow of spending from consumer to retailer to wholesaler to manufacturer and again to the millions of workers like Joe Parker. And so go Bill and his pals, whether it's for TV sets, millinery, or any of the products our nation produces. As Bill Greenstuff and his friends flow from hand to hand, goods and services also move from hand to hand. The retailer sells to the consumer in exchange for Bill. The wholesaler keeps the retailer stocked for Bill. The manufacturer sells the finished product to the wholesaler for Bill. And we exchange our labor and other resources to the manufacturer for Bill. The flow of spendings and the flow of goods and services determine how high prices are. Price is the measure we use when we trade our money for goods and services. If there is no change in either of these flows, prices won't change. But our flow of goods usually increases as our country grows and our capacity to produce increases. And we want the flow of spendings to increase to match the flow of goods so our nation's output can be sold and we can have jobs. But money's funny. If the flow of spendings increases faster than the flow of goods and services, we have inflation. This can come about in two ways. First, faster spending of existing money will push prices up. Second, we can spend more if our nation's money supply increases. That brings up an important part of our story. Let's see where all these extra dollars come from. When you borrow money from a bank, you give the bank your note and it gives you a deposit credit against which you can write checks. When you write checks on that newly created deposit account, new money is being added to the spending stream. On the other hand, money is taken out of circulation when you pay your note at the bank. When inflation drives prices higher and higher, each dollar is worth less and less. More and more things are priced out of the reach of people living on pensions, on fixed incomes, the salaried worker, at least one half the wage earners of this country. Joe Parker hopes to save a little for his old age but inflation can completely destroy the value of his savings. What can we do about inflation? Many things. Some are less desirable than others. We could pass a law, and Uncle Sam could say price increases are illegal. But as long as the money and the desire to spend that money exist, the pressure on prices is still there. Price controls, or any other direct controls, do not attack the cause of inflation. But there are several ways to get at these spending pressures. We can spend less and save more. That gives Bill a chance to rest and takes pressure off prices. We can increase output by working longer hours. That will add to the flow of goods and services. But overtime pay means more spending as well as more goods. That adds to the spending stream and we don't necessarily come out ahead on that deal. One real secret is greater productivity. More output for every man hour of work. This greater productivity is generally made possible by business investment, bigger plant, better equipment, better tools to work with. Uncle Sam can help too. He can cut down on the number of dollars he pours into that spending stream. Or he can increase taxes pulling some of the extra dollars out of the spending stream. 
And something can be done about too much money created by excessive borrowing. The Federal Reserve System was established by Congress to regulate the supply, cost, and availability of money. The nation's central banking system, with headquarters in Washington and regional reserve banks throughout the country, can strongly influence the ability of banks to lend, creating monetary conditions favorable to stable economic progress and helping to avoid both inflation and deflation. So a great deal can be done to combat inflation and deflation by the Federal Reserve System, by governmental taxing and spending, by business and consumers. But in the final analysis, the decisions of the people as voters or as individuals tell the story. You have the final say in the value of your money. The best friend your money has is you.